The Lady of Guadalupe, written and illustrated by Tommy De Paola. A long time ago, in the country now called Mexico, there lived an Indian named Juan Diego. That was not always his name. Before the white man came across the sea from Spain, Juan Diego was called He Who Speaks Like an Eagle. He lived simply in the village of Tepoltlac with his wife, and he planted corn and paid his taxes to the great Aztec Empire. Some of the white men were called friars. They spoke of one God who was kind and loving, like a father. He who speaks like an eagle and his wife listened to the friars. They became Christians and their names were changed to Juan Diego and Maria Lucia. They were faithful to their new religion and had much peace and happiness. One winter, Maria Lucia became ill and died. Juan Diego was heartbroken, but the friars told him not to be sad, that surely a good woman like Maria Lucia was safe in the kingdom of their new father. Juan Diego continued to work hard, and just as he had done when his wife was alive, he went every Saturday to the Church of Santiago to pray at the Mass in honor of the Mother of God. And then he would stay for the next great celebration of prayers and Mass on Sunday. But one day, on the 9th of December in the year 1531, something happened that would change his life forever. And it was just before dawn that Juan Diego put on his tilma and set out for the Saturday services at the church. It was a fair distance from his village, but Juan Diego was used to it. He traveled on foot at a good pace, as had all his ancestors centuries before him. When Juan Diego neared the hill of Tepeyac, he heard what he thought was a bird song but it was different. It sounded as though a choir of birds was singing the chant that the friars had taught him. He, it reminded Juan Diego of the music of the Mass. Looking up, he saw that the top of the hill was covered by a brilliant white cloud. He decided to have a closer look as Juan Diego got nearer, the cloud seemed to explode in rays of color. And suddenly the music stopped. Silence was all around. Then Juan Diego heard a human voice, the sweet, gentle voice of a woman speaking in his own language. Juan, the voice said. Juan Diego. Juan Diego ran to the very top of the hill. As he got there, the cloud parted, and he saw the most beautiful lady dressed in what looked like the robes of an Aztec princess. Juan Diego threw himself down on his knees. The lady looked as if she was standing in front of the sun with light all around her. Everything gleamed and glistened as though made of precious jewels and gold. Juan Diego, the woman said, smallest and most beloved of my sons. Juan scrambled to his feet. Where are you off to, Juanito? The lady asked. Juan Diego answered as politely as possible because he could tell he was speaking to a royal person. 
He told the lady he was on his way to the Church of Santiago to hear the Mass in honor of the Mother of God. My very dear son, the lady said, I want you to know that I am the Mother of God, and I want you to listen carefully. I have a very important message to give you. I wish to have a church built here where I can can show my love to all your people, the Indians. You must go at once to the house of the Bishop of Mexico and tell him that I have sent you to make this request. Tell him that he must build a church here right away. Tell him that you have seen and heard me. Juan Diego was in a daze as he pushed his way through the crowds in the busy city of Mexico. He had no trouble finding the bishop's house because all the roads led to the main square. On one side of the square was the cathedral and the bishop's home. High white walls and a huge wooden gate surrounded the house. Juan Diego banged the heavy knocker. The doorkeeper, an old friar, looked through a peephole and opened a small door in the gate. I have important business with His Excellency the Bishop, Juan Diego said. The courtyard was already filled with people, both Indian and Spanish, who had come to ask favors from His Excellency. Juan Diego went to a corner to wait under a tree. I've lost my place. Okay. Okay, there we go. He waited and waited, watching the beggars, clowns, fortune tellers, and dancers who had also showed up there. A friar was walking around, questioning those who had come to see the bishop. He didn't reach Juan Diego until noon. Juan Diego told the young friar about the lady and her message, but instead of taking him to see the bishop, the friar questioned Juan over and over again. At last the friar said, Juan Diego, I'm sure His Excellency will want to hear this from your own lips, but he is a very busy man, so you must be patient and wait till I can arrange an audience for you. A meeting. Again, Juan Diego waited. Finally, late in the afternoon, the friar returned and led Juan Diego to a bare room, a big room. Sitting on a raised throne sat a small figure in the same brown robes as the friars, surrounded by people. It was the bishop. With the help of an interpreter, the bishop asked, What is it you wish, my son? Only that you build a church for the mother of God who spoke to me on the hill of Tepeyac this morning at dawn and requested me to ask you for this small favor, Juan answered. Laughter ran through the room. The bishop raised his hand and the crowd grew quiet. Then the bishop asked Juan all the same questions that the young friar had already asked him. What happened? Tell me everything. My son, the bishop said slowly in the Aztec language without the help of an interpreter, I have many pressing matters that I must attend to. If you will return in a few days and repeat all the details you have so carefully told us, we will think about it. Be patient with us. 